A proposal by the Trump administration to renegotiate the North American Free Trade Agreement, or NAFTA, with Canada is casting a cloud over the future of the Canadian oil industry. Canada is the main foreign crude oil supplier to the US, and the Canadian oil industry was expecting to see a steady rise in production, based in no small part on its export trade with the US. Now, this is being thrown into doubt by President Trump's desire to renegotiate the rules governing trade between the two countries, as laid out by NAFTA. President Trump has said the provisions of NAFTA are a threat to US national security and has called them a disgrace as well as a disaster for our country. Much of his initial ire was directed against the trade in timber and dairy products, but in April this year he turned his ire on energy, saying that this must be discussed with Canada very, very quickly. NAFTA allows Canadian crude free access to the US, and a large trade has built up since 1994 when the agreement first came into operation. In that year, Canada exported just shy of 1 million barrels per day to the US. Last year, that had risen to 3.25 million barrels per day, paralleling an increase in Canadians' oil production from 2.3 to 4.5 million barrels per day. President Trump has not made clear what he wants from a renegotiated NAFTA in terms of energy, but one idea that is actively being floated in Washington is a so-called border adjustment tax, which would be, in effect, a tax on foreign oil imports. Canada's crude oil production is dominated by extra heavy crudes and synthetic crude, which is a bitumen crude which has been upgraded by fractulation and chemical treatment. Both are produced from oil sands in Alberta. The potential production is huge given the sands contain an estimated 165 billion barrels of recoverable oil. Indeed, the oil sands are expected to account for any increase in Canadian production after 2019, since output from most conventional fields is already falling. Oil sands are more expensive to develop than most conventional oil fields. The oil can be extracted either by mining or by the use of steam injected via wells. The break-even cost for a new development is around $70 per barrel for mining operations and $43 per barrel for in-situ steam recovery. But crucially, these apply only to the mine or well head. To transport the oil to the US adds a further cost in each case. The Canadian Energy Research Institute estimates that when transport and other costs are added, the break-even rises to a WTI equivalent of $60.52 for steam operations and $75 for mining operations, although improvements in technology could reduce these costs in the future. Nevertheless, any tax imposed on Canadian oil imports by the US would mean an equivalent rise in the oil price was needed to make new oil sand projects economic. The uncertainty created by this situation is bound to have an effect on some oil sand projects that are currently on the drawing board. A further uncertainty is provided by any NAFTA renegotiation. The planned increase in Canadian production depends to a considerable extent on the building of new pipelines from Canada to the US. The existing NAFTA arrangements are not entirely clear when it comes to cross-border pipelines and any renegotiation is bound to have considerable impact upon them and both sides are likely to have different points of view on the subject. The Obama administration was largely seen as unsympathetic to new cross-border pipelines and managed to delay a project for an 800,000 barrels per day line known as Keystone XL from Alberta to the Gulf Coast. In March this year, President Trump announced the project would go ahead, but the line still needs a host of approvals from state and other official bodies. In addition, the Canadians may use any renegotiation of the treaty to raise the issue of the ability of US politicians to delay or veto any future Canadian pipeline scheme. The Canadian government has been privately advised that it is in a strong position to resist any attempt by the US to impose tariffs on Canadian oil or to restrict them in any way, such as denying permission to Canadian companies to build and operate pipelines in the US. The view of many in Ottawa is that US energy security would be adversely affected if imports of Canadian oil were to fall, since the likely result would be a rise in US imports from OPEC. In the last decade or so, Canadian crude has replaced that of several OPEC members in the US market, most notably from Saudi Arabia, the Canadian case, however, may be not as strong as it appears to some in Ottawa.
the US refiners will certainly continue to want Canada's heavy and sour crudes since many of them in the Midwest and on the Gulf Coast are designed specifically to run on the heaviest and lowest priced crudes which Canada is better able to supply than anywhere else because of its proximity and its extensive pipeline connections. It's also of course likely to prove a more reliable long-term supplier than many of its competitors. Nevertheless, it remains the case that US oil production is rising and some import substitution is likely a result of this. Indeed, extending this further, it may be seen as desirable in order to help fulfill President Trump's desire of improving the energy security of the US. Another aspect of the security issue for the new US president is his desire to reduce the role of foreign corporations in the US economy, including their role in supplying its energy. The US is by far the most important market for Canada's oil producers and is likely to remain so. Last year, gross exports of crude to the US were the equivalent of 73% of Canada's total production at nearly 3.3 million barrels per day. Any renegotiation of the trade arrangements with the US will therefore be of critical importance to Canada's oil producers and any plans they have to increase their production. To hedge this risk, therefore, a number of producers want to try and minimise the impact of any new trade deal with the US by promoting new pipelines to the Pacific coast where the oil can be exported to Asia. There are also plans to send more crude eastwards as well, but all new pipelines across Canada face opposition from powerful local lobby groups and, in a number of cases, from provincial governments. In recognition of this, the federal government is imposing ever more conditions on pipeline schemes before granting approvals to new proposals. Any delays to new pipelines will have an important implication for future levels of production. Canada's total pipeline capacity is a little over 4 million barrels, and on present plans the country's pipeline system will be at full capacity by 2021. The US president has repeatedly blamed NAFTA for an economic carnage that he claims to have inherited and the offshoring of hundreds of thousands of US manufacturing jobs. In April 2017, he came close to pulling the US out of NAFTA before being convinced to give renegotiations a chance. But now it's crunch time. With the negotiations, Mr Trump is taking ownership of a trade deal that has long been politically toxic in the US and opens a potential Pandora's box filled with clashing economic interests. To be frank, neither Canada nor Mexico nor the vast bulk of American businesses want to reopen NAFTA. The main reason for that, beyond economics, is the political risk, and that has not gone away. If a deal is struck, it's unclear if it could survive a vote in Congress. Democrats are almost certain to oppose anything negotiated by the Trump administration, seeing his softening on trade as a political weak spot. Many pro-trade Republicans are uncomfortable with some of Mr Trump's demands. If a deal collapses, or the president again threatens to withdraw from NAFTA, he would face a revolt from Republicans in farm states and the business community. More importantly still may be Mr Trump's own political standing and the impact that this will have on talks. Facing historically low approval ratings just seven months into a four-year term, the president is less feared in Washington, Canada and Mexico than he was when he took office. That reality could hang a big shadow over the negotiating table.